Scream Queen, Season 2, Episode 9, Thoughts. This episode is called Love in the D, another episode I love. Spoilers for this episode as well as all the ones leading up to it. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers, and I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive right in to Lovin' the D. So, yeah. Um, the Chanel's are surprised to learn that Zayde was living with them. Who's Zayde again? Was she ever on this show? Anyway. No, that is that is legitimately a very funny joke, and and you know by the end of the episode they're like, okay, she's got to be missing. She has not been Snapchatting for a while. I for like a week now. I have not known what the gag is. You know, that's yeah. How how else would you tell that a young person has gone missing than they're not on social media anymore? And yeah, the the they find the the yeah the the setup with the the swamp goo and the the dead kappa kappa tau. And I appreciate that each of them get a chance to scream. It's not like one of you know they see it and all scream all at once. No, they scream one at a time. And. And they talk about, you know, okay, so clearly the green meanie's around. We're going to, you know, we're going to split up. You know, one, okay, so one of us is probably going to die. Let's be honest, it's going to be show number five. You know, they make another crack at her appearance. And Chanel number three says, last one to make, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll go to the... Last one who makes it to, to um, Starbucks has to buy the other, you know, has to buy for everyone. To which Chanel number five points out, last one to make it is going to be dead. <laughs> she really is a genius. And, <laughs> you know, Chanel number one is willing to make the, the sacrifice of Chanel number three. And, yeah, we see all three green meanies. And I love that, like, one of them is just about to attack number three, and then the one that's obviously Cassidy, like, you know, prevents that, and number three isn't like, oh, thank God I'm alive. She's like, oh, Cassidy, hot stuff, and winks at him with the right eye and everything. And, you know, they also get into an argument over who gets to kill Chanel number one to the point where Chanel number one ends up escaping. And <laughs> Hester calls for a green meanie summit, which just amazing. But she, she's good at, at, you know, taking part in organizing the, the serial killing. So, you know. What's that thing about, you know, do what you love and you'll work every second of your life instead of no day of your life. And we see a little bit of love in the D. And I really appreciate the detail that we do actually see the, the I'm afraid of, uh, Garrett. We see Garrett, you know, and, and D, you know, what, you know, wonderful Brooke Shields, always wonderful. You know, I, I imagine in real life meeting her probably does feel like she's walking in, in slow motion. You know, big fan of hers. Yeah, you know, the the she talks about Garrett and and the the issue, and then it cuts to the reaction. So we don't we don't get much more. But then when we when she does meet them and says, you know, need to do the surgery, you know, we the audience is like, oh right, the guy from the show, you know. And I, yeah, I like Chanel number five pointing out, why is it called Love in the D? Shouldn't it be Love in the Doctor? And just, yeah. And Chanel number one just can't get enough of this show. Just, yeah. And you're welcome. Another thing I did for you. 
Do you also have a PhD in bragging? You know, so sometimes I get the feeling that the, the people writing the show don't love it when people throw around all the, the titles they have. That's just, just a feeling. Comes up every so often. And let's see. Yeah, I, I really love Kathy Munch doing damage control because, like, you know, the, you know, Arthur, Dr. Arthur is like, ah, oh, so you did really well in the MCATs then. You know, uh, yeah. He says, I need to see their MCATs, you know. And I forget which, you know, one of the Chanel's is like, MCAT, what is that? It is like, oh my god, how are you so bad? Just, they're, they're just so oblivious, and I love it. Just like, at this point, they already know that he's working in the, you know, he's, he's, not a reporter himself, but he's an editor. It's very important that he believe the lies so that this whole f sham can keep going. And they don't even, you know, like, just hypothetically, if I myself were in that situation, you know, I'd be like, MCAT, yeah, sure. D you know, no problem, we'll get you those, you know, test results. But no, they of course have to just, yeah. And, yeah, and I love them, them mentioning, you know, we want to be TV doctors, not real doctors. That, my friend, is what we refer to in the business as shots fired. Take that, Dr. Phil. And I, uh, what was his name again? Dr. The, the... I was about to say the Oprah one, but they're both Oprah. They, they both started on Oprah. Um, let's see. Oprah promoted Dr. Oz, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, from what I hear, you know, I think technically Dr. Phil is, or at least was, a doctor, but he's said and done some really, you know, unethical things. Dr. Oz just straight up you know, scammer, con artist, grifter. So, yeah, um, very nicely done. Very, great, great takedown of them to to make that. Yeah, because because think about it, like if they didn't want to make be making that, you know, making that statement, they could have just said, you know, sure, we'll be doctors as long as we get to be on TV or. Something like that, but no, they specifically said we don't. We want to be TV doctors, not real doctors. And Zayde realizes, you know, Cassidy was a baby, and more specifically, more relevant to the ongoing investigation, the baby from the, you know, was it 20, 20, 20 years, thirty years, some, some, yeah, thirty years prior. I love how much Jane Hollis despises Chanel number three, and it's this thing again. Like they're basically take, there's a lot of there's a lot of you know a number of times when a young man brings a young woman home to mom and possibly dad and say you know love of my life please you know this is the person I'm gonna marry. You know, as, as cishet as this is going to sound, a lot of the times, mom is like, you are not good enough for my son. But here, there's the added layer of, you better not think that you're going to talk this entire family out of serial killing. That's not a thing that's going to happen. Okay, sweetie, earmuffs. <laughs> you're, at this point, you're just mad at geography. I mean, when she's right, she's right, and the, the, yeah, you have the, the, yeah, she, she points out, you know, this is like attacking, you know, a, a Hilton Hotel because you really hate Paris' song, which, fair enough, it is truly terrible, you know, I don't condone violence, but that is a, an, an abysmal 
song. I'm, I'm glad that we are now, you know, or we, some on the left have, you know, some of us on the left have come around on Paris Hilton, not, you know, hating her, not celebrating the revenge porn, or blaming her for it. But I think we can still appreciate that that was not a good song. And, let's see... Yeah, um, Love, Chanel number 1, and Dr. Lovin', you know, together, just, yeah, the, the, the fangirling and the whole, just, yeah. And, yeah, we learn, you know, the other doctors have heard, and they're gonna try to scoop us, so we have to do it quickly to, to beat them to it, which is just, like, I know this is fiction, but there is a certain truth to, like, in America, you know, today, if, you know, if you are part of this fight for attention, yeah, you might do something really rash in order to, to capitalize on the attention you're currently getting, you know, to, to make sure you, you do it before the the you know, prime time window has, has closed, and just, yeah, let's see, you know, there was that, um, I, I'm not, let's see, this episode aired in 2016, December 13th, I'm not sure, the, I think this might have been before Trump, you know, pushed, you know, yeah, um, he demanded that they uh, make a military attack sooner than what was being recommended because he wanted it on the the specific like uh, what's the word um yeah he like the the media coverage he wanted it it was something like you know he wanted to be prime time or something and because of the rush job, they weren't able to carry out as much reconnaissance as they had hoped. And I forget the exact number, but at least one American soldier died because he wanted it, you know, on TV at the, you know, yeah, prime time or some, something like that. So, yeah, you know, they really nailed the, the tendency for... Americans do that, yeah. And we learn, you know, they're gonna have to do the exams tonight. And I really appreciate the casting, the the um, yeah, the proctor uh, doesn't doesn't give a, a credit for the gam gamble, but uh, David Aaron, the the tenth apparently, because there's an X. Oh wow, he's only been in four things total, this included. But yeah, he's fantastic. Just uh, yeah. Let's see. And you know, I I really love the, you know, pencils down and like they drop them and like number 5 like collapses basically. And we learn later it's because she was the one doing the work. You know, the other two were cheating. So She's actually exhausted. And the, the you know, we learned that they, they cheated. And they did set up, you know, earlier in the episode, Chanel had, like, we couldn't really make them out until she removed them from her ears. But she was listening, you know, she wasn't even listening to Brock when he's like, you know, okay, so the, the you have to understand how, you know, this is, you know, he's going over, like, test stuff, and she, like, laughs, and she's like, oh, I wasn't listening to you, you know, she just wants to know how to cheat, and, let's see, uh, wow, I completely forgot about, wait, did I do all those, hold on, yeah, I think I got a bunch of notes, out of order. Ah, uh, let's see what makes most sense. I think I will finish the notes and then jump back. Yeah, apologies for the confusion. I just realized I didn't do. Yeah, 
Anyway, um, let's see. Yeah, and, and the proctor comes in. Great news. Then why the F aren't you smiling? And, yeah, turns out, you know, and, and, you know, Munch is like, okay, yeah. How'd you actually do it? We know, you know, this is not, there's no way you passed without, you know. And, yeah, Cassidy took the test for Chanel number three. You know, Holt took the test for Chanel Oberlin because obviously Holt doesn't want to be embarrassed by, you know, it's been publicized. It's, oh, you know, Dr. Holt is going to do this big operation, uh, you know, so he needs them to be okay. And, yeah, Cassidy, maybe he did it to so that number three wouldn't be embarrassed. Maybe he did it as a favor to Holt. And, yeah, and we learn, you know, Chanel number five got a better score than Cassidy and Holt, you know, and, and said, you know, I actually passed, and no one cares. And Chanel number one, you know, I read genius and no one cares. Oh, my God, number five, shot up. Just amazing. And, yeah, uh, Wes tries to set up the the coffee poisoning for number one and of course they do the old switcheroo the un unintentional you know someone ends up with yeah and so Dr. Lovin ends up poisoned and I really love that you know at f yeah at first they're like w what do we do now and you know well I guess we go on air and at first number five is like pretending to be Dr. Lovin which it's hard for me to put into words because there's so many reasons why she obviously isn't. She sounds nothing like two talented actor actresses. They sound nothing alike. You know, they're the voice register is completely different. The height is completely different. The energy just yeah, complete just yeah. And and Chanel number one wisely shuts that down. And I appreciate, you know, Chanel number one has wanted to be on TV for a long time. In season one, she wanted to be a Fox News host, which ultimately got ruined by the reputation of her and the other Chanel's getting destroyed. So, you know, obviously that isn't happening anymore. But yeah, TV doctor, you know, she's wanted this for years. Like, not years, but a year. And... And because, you know, Link Ventlon, you know, notes that Chanel number one really has it, he hires the Chanel's, but not Dr. Brock for the show. Just amazing. And we learn, you know, oh, everybody hated Dr. Lovin, you know, her getting poisoned. Yeah, not... Honestly, we were pretty much counting, you know, there, there, was, there was a betting pool for how long it would take for someone to finally just yeah <laughs> and Wes says you know oh the the Chanel's are always failing upward just using the image of you know if they fell yeah if they fell in the Grand Canyon they'd land on the moon which yeah And I, I quite appreciate, you know, Wes says, this is not the UN. And then he describes, and, and he's like, okay, that is exactly like the UN. And, yeah, he agrees to, to commit suicide in the frying oil. As long as Chanel dies and it's slow and painful. You know, that's the important part. Any last words? Playlist. Which, yeah, 100%, that, that would be his last word. Or words? Is that one word or two? Ah. I gotta rewatch Small Soldiers to, to find out if that's one word or two. And, yeah, this is, of course, gonna lower the guard for the... And, and they ev everyone seems to buy it. You know, oh, the Green Meanie is dead. Let's see. And, and yeah. Um, Kathy Munch tells everyone present she'll be dead in a month. I kept waiting for, like, Chanel number one to be like, yes! 
but yeah, I I was a little surprised that there that didn't happen, or her like cackling like in that one South Park episode where Kyle can't help but laugh at Cartman's extreme misfortune. Anyway, jumping back, yeah, apologies for the confusion. So the yeah, love the the bit where the Chanel's actually meet Doctor Lovin and just. Yeah, the you know all three actresses, the the three actresses playing the Chanel's just really great at at like doing these really exaggerated reactions. And let's see, yeah, we learn you know the Chanel's are gonna do this operation on live television, which also just like I'm not entirely sure. Well, let's see, yeah, more recently, like I heard about a doctor who was like making. I want to say it was there were TikToks or something like that, not not TED talks, TikToks, where she would like, yeah, and and you know it eventually I want to say it cost her her job and her license because yeah she wasn't paying enough attention to the actual like was she doing surgeries it was something along those lines you know so so yeah the the episode is very sadly prophetic. And, you know, like, Holt points out, this is a very time-consuming, dangerous operation. Are you really sure you want to do it on television? Let's see. And I love, during the procedure, like, Chanel number one is, like, constantly getting in front of the camera and, like, saying these big declarative statements. And, I mean, you know... Link isn't wrong. She does have it. And, yeah, we see the... Let's see... Yeah, you know, the girls agreed to take the MCATs so that they get to be on television, which is just such... Yeah, that's... that's you know, there's sadly a lot of Americans who are only willing to do something like that if it means they get like famous or something i really love the the summit and i quite appreciate the who killed who segment segment like a game show you know cuz i was wondering and it really clears everything up and it's it's one of those things like i've seen a lot of slasher movies where you know turns out there's more than one killer and, you know, sometimes we get clear answers, oh, that person killed that person, but otherwise it's, like, up to us viewers to speculate. And here they just come out and say it, and they even make, like, they even have the, like, ding-ding sound effect for, as if it's a game show. And, yeah, uh, no one present believes that Cassidy is actually going to kill number three, you know. Yeah, I'll take care of her, uh, yeah take care of her, you, like, you mean that, what, take care of her? Uh, oh, you mean take her out. Or, yeah. And, and the, you know, the, the, you know, he says, no, I, I'll kill her. What? With kisses? I love that it's, like, this thing, because it's, like, essentially, the scene is, like, them, like, making fun of him as, like, uh, you know, they they might as well be like going you know cascade and number three sitting in a tree you know something like that but they're talking about serial killing you know it's so surreal yeah and they they divvy up the rest and yeah ultimately Hoffel does get Chanel number one I quite appreciate number three saying you know. I'm honestly super low maintenance for the the ultimatum I make is that you have to stop serial killing. And let's see. Yeah, we see, you know, Chanel number one isn't even listening to Brock. And, you know, it's like, why am I here? And it's just like, oh, I just I'm just looking for the best way to cheat. And he actually, you know, he, he chokes her again. He's like, oh, I, get, I don't know. I, there must be a little bit of, you know, um, the, the serial killer hand must have a tiny little bit of stuff left, you know. 
and she points out, but you choked me with both hands, you know, and 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 she's like. You know, and, and Hoff was like, so what is it now? Oh, thank you for asking. That's so sweet. You know, if he's a serial killer I, and, and trying to kill me, I don't think I can date him anymore. Let's see. And, yeah, and, and Hoff is like, have you ever wondered why so many people are trying to kill you? No. And, I mean, to be clear, like, victim blaming is awful, but, like... That is a funny joke. And and Hoffel claims, oh, the answer to every one of these is B. Really? That makes so much sense. <laughs> and and just the Yeah, I, I right, I love the fact that, you know, during the test, like you see them read aloud the, the questions and you're sitting there watching like, oh my are, have they never taken I I mean they must have never taken a test before. Who, who reads aloud? You're supposed to just read it in your head. But then we learn they're reading it aloud so that, you know, their boyfriends can hear and give the answer. I have bad memories with fry cook oil. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You do. And Ulrich is, you know, uh, so is is this okay? Oh yeah, yeah, she's she's dead. She's been dead for hours. Then why is she still here? Oh, I haven't told anybody yet. I like having access to a fresh corpse. Mhm. Mm okay. Just gonna gonna let that one go. Just let's let's move on. And uh, you know, so um, I know that you have also killed people. I killed like one person, and yes, I facilitated a lot of other people dying. Mm -hmm. That's good enough for this conversation. Let's move on. And yeah, they talk about the three options for why, you know, why did he choke Chanel with both hands? And yeah, it's it's a very funny exchange. And you know, Hester, like when she's right, she's right. Those are the three options. Ms. Ulrich, you're trying to seduce Brock, and it's working. Uh, take her to the my special morgue. Special morgue. Got it. Just, wow. And I really love, you know, Wes in his incredibly dorky looking exercise, you know, uh, running, yeah, you know, Runs up to to Cassie and is like, "Oh, fancy meeting you here! What are you talking about? You've been following." Hoffel does not care about the Green Mini community, which wow, that's that's one way to put it. And yeah, you know, he suggests they should, you know, take out, you know, um, yeah, so that it, and and it does make sense that she would try to leave them with the, you know, she's not as obvious of a suspect as Cassidy. You know, it, it really is just a matter of time before people realize he's the baby. Not from the bathtub, but from the belly. And the, you know, okay, so the baby in the bathtub used to be a baby in the belly, but is, you know, yeah. And the the uh, let's see yeah and I and then that changes when Wes goes against what they were you know they had agreed that he not be the one to kill Chanel number one and yeah uh, I love the scene where Kathy wakes up and like everyone is is there and. Yeah, and, and the way Hester smiles while saying, you know, the green meanie is gone, so it's, yeah. So, the, let's see, yeah, and, and the, yeah, so it's on my MDB trivia for the episode, the, um, yeah, there's the line about, you know, you know, will will you run off with earmuffs here or finish the job you were raised from a pup to complete? And, you know, in Twilight, 
he turns into a wolf, so it is, yeah. And, yeah, I am very excited to see, you know, the, the so let's see, the next episode, I want to say, is the very last, let's see, yeah. So, yeah, in one week, I will do the finale of season two, and since right now it's not looking likely that we'll, at least not soon, get a season three, next week I intend to do both the, you know, this, yeah, this kind of video on the finale, as well as a review of the first two seasons. So, yeah. Um, I think that... Yeah, I, I don't know with absolute certainty what day next week, but someday next week I will do the finale, and possibly same day, we'll see. I'll do the review. And until then, truly no one cares that number five is secretly a genius.